Bonjour! Welcome to all of you geeks, readers and collectors of comic books and welcome to the top 10 of the week of which I will do a deep dive on my top 5 and an honourable mention of 5 more plus right at the end of the video and I do chapterise it so you can skip all the waffle if you love the comic covers just skip right right to the end of the video where we do cover of the week imagining if we only had pocket money for one comic we, we're walking up to the spinner rack or the shelf in the drugstore or news agent depending on US or UK and oh we're being sucked in by the covers. Like, what one? What one? Oh, I've only got one. I can only choose one. I can't. I can't drag them all away. This week had, well, the heavy hitter. Let's get it out of the way. The heavy hitter was X-Men, wasn't it? Uncanny X-Men. So it is in my top five to put you all out of your misery. Um, if you haven't seen my separate video, quick plug. <laughs> so I'm going to do deep dive on the top five all the spoilers will be after the scroll so I will give you my top ten of which I will do five deep dive after the scroll and the cover of the week so fear not if you haven't picked up your pull list or you know you're, you're waiting monthly for your post and all the rest of it I'm going to give the I'm going to give the the basic we, you know, no more than you would have already read about and, and, and blah, blah. But the spoilers will be after the scroll. So, let's get on with it. And let's... Ah, before I do get on with it, thank you so much. All of you guys and girls that are subscribing, my sexy, sexy gang of subscribers, thank you so much. Uh, it really does cheer me up, fill my heart with joy. And if you're commenting and liking, that's the whole, that is the, the holy trinity of any YouTuber. So thank you so much if you're doing that. And I do, I thoroughly enjoy it. It, it gets me excited. If any of you know me uh, from Threads, and hello also to my Threads friends, I do have to say that slowly with my new TV. But I do, I, I, you, you know, if you, if you know me from threads, that I love getting into it. And we haven't all got to agree either. Let me know if, if there's something you disagree with. If you go, oh, mate, like, no. Well, let's talk about it. Let's, let's discuss it because no one's life is at stake. It's only comics. And that's the best bit about fandom, from my in, in my opinion anyway. The best bit about fandom, whether it's a Star Trek fan arguing with a Star Wars fan or a DC fan arguing with a Marvel fan. Come on. All we're arguing about, well, we're not even arguing. It's not even a debate. We're just telling each other how much we love our team, our side, our creators, our titles, our comics. So come on. Let's all get into it, even if you disagree with me. Without further ado, here we go. Come on, get it out of the way now. Get it out of the way. Here we go. This is in my this is my top five. And this has got to be there because Gal Simone has, has done a lovely job here of, of bringing back the heavy hitters that we want to see. They've done a good job of leaving this to last. I don't think there's another from the Ashes title left. If there is, um, it's going to be released in the shadow of this one. Gal Simone, uh, the who is it Marquez? You know, f forgive me if I don't know if these are established. David Marquez, lovely job, just just spot on, just spot on intro. Not a reboot, and that's a continuation of post Krakoa stuff. But anyway. I just want to show off some of the art. The reason this is in, in the deep dive is that the separate video I did of all the X-Men comics, I didn't do a deep dive. And, and I think Marquez's artwork deserves it. 
And th this deserves it as well. And I think I mentioned this last month. As a, I think I mentioned the last issue of Ultimate Black Panther. This has really upped the ante. Brian Hill is really bringing it now, story-wise. The action has upped. All the threads that he's sewn, I, st I will still say quickly, he took too long to get there, which I think they're all in the... I think they're all in the shadow of Hickman, to be fair. And he takes far too long to get to where he needs to be. And I, I like his writing, but he takes far too long. Nothing happens in the meanwhile. It just rolls on and 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 rolls on. Oh, well, let me get a map. And rolls on and rolls on. And then, oh, now I know what it all means. But we've had to spend a year <laughs> buying comics. So anyway, <laughs> that is almost a whinge of the week, isn't it? But Hickman's got nothing to do with it. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Any regular of my show is probably groaning now. We are 20 issues in of this masterpiece. And I will call it a masterpiece by Wes Craig. We are 20 issues in. And this guy hasn't let me down for a moment. Not a moment. If you are not picking this up and you like your fantasy stories and, and you just like something a little bit I mean it you could accuse it of being a little bit uh young adult but nevertheless he's not pandering and talking down to his audience he's making it an all audiences story and I, I, I applaud him so much for this and I like the fact that on the back, and I know you regulars are still, you're all rolling your eyes and groaning. I can, I can hear you. I can hear you groaning and saying, Hog, you keep going on about it. I know, and I will until more uh, publishers and editors and, and creators realise that putting the, the story so far, just not wasting the back cover. Don't waste it. Just give us the story so far. Or, or like when you pick up a book, in the library or the, 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 the bookshop and you go oh what's this about you look at the cover oh that's a nice cover you look at the back because you've never picked it up before it might be the fourth book in a story arc but on the back cover you will be told what's going on and I think comics need to do a bit more than just put in a little picture but Kaya where's Craig thank you guys all of you lot over image that do even this on the front. And then even, anyway. <laughs> so leading on from being reminded about the story so far, month after month, this little beauty turns up. And it is a beautiful thing. But I have completely forgotten what's going on they have told us at the back which is good thumbs up bear in mind this is in my top five by the way it sounds like i'm whinging a lot this week but all i'm going to say about this beautiful beautiful comic book is that i forget what's going on because it's about six months since the last issue and i can't you, you, you think about how many comics you digest, how many storylines and characters and story arcs you just in comics, let alone watching a couple of films and a few TV series. You, you know, it's, it's, it's coming at you, coming at you, coming at you. Six months later, the third issue of a comic you really like, which I do, by the way, and it is beautiful. It's in my top five because I need to show you again. I think I did it so long ago. I'm not prepared to look through all my playlist, my comic book playlists and see what this should be because it was so long ago. But Lieber Mejo, wow. Every single page, full colour painted. I mean, I don't, I can see why it's six months late and I don't know if it is or if it's six months or not. I can see why he is late. All I would say is, B, 
Boom Studios, you should be advancing Liebermeer Joe enough dough to live on until he's completed the story, or at least three quarters of the way through, so you can start publishing it on a regular basis. Distillery haven't haven't missed a step. Not that anything they've done is on the scale of what Liebermeerjo is doing there, and I've got to admire him for that. I, I, I do. I, I wholeheartedly admire him for the scale of what he's trying to accomplish there, and it is a beautiful thing. But yeah, distillery haven't missed a step. They obviously commission work, get it going. They either ask the, the, the creators to finish it and advance them. I don't know what they do. I'd love to know behind the scenes, but um, anyway, I don't. I'm not privy to that information. It would have been book of the week because it's so beautiful, to be fair, this week. And it is. it has been a busy week. There was about 20, yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's about 20 books. So we're back to normal because it was a slow week last week. So it, it was one of those rare five week months. So we've got books from everyone this week. But this, now I know Scotty Young has got his detractors and is he the new, is he the new Alan Moore or Grant Morrison or, or whoever, you know, insert name of writer that gets all the awards? He will. I think in the future, he will. Scotty Young will. But at the moment, he's telling this horror western tale. And this issue, I need, it is book of the week. And I will show you on the deep dive what a beautiful matching of writer and artist this is. Is it Jose, uh, no, Jorge? Jorge Corona, it's one of my favourite beers actually, so I don't know why I forgot his name. Jorge Corona, his artwork on this, stylistically, you wouldn't think it would suit a Western, but it's just a beautiful comic told without any word balloons until the last page. And that's why Book of the Week Nevertheless, we follow the story. If you've been following it for all four issues, you know, which you need to do, you're following the story, you're following the character and everything without any, and I, I, I think that's spot on. When it is sequential art at the top of its game, then this is very nearly, this is very nearly at the very top. So that's my top five and that's my book of the week. In the meanwhile, before the scroll, bear with me. There are five other comics that, you know, if you're having an R in or you haven't got them yet. This is great. Couple of stories in there. Straczynski's in there. And uh, J.M. Dematius is in there. Um, with some just nice, they nail it. They nail it. I like those uh, black, white, and red books. Why are they called it? Here I go, whinging again. Black suit and blood. That's a bit corny. Don't know who the editor was or who, who makes that decision. The whether it's the uh, who would make the decision on that. Nice story by uh, Dusty Nagoyen, who, who's done the the stuff with um, the image. Who's done the stuff? Is it with Jeff Lemire? Yeah, I think he is. Anyway, yeah. Jane, the four great. Uh, the Alyssa Wong. Don't know why. She keeps getting given work because she can't tell a story to save her life. But nevertheless, there's three others in there that are worth your money. Spider Man Rain. Now, something struck me with this issue, and I've been a long-term fan of Care Andrews. What I've realised, he is like the next generation of Todd McFarlane cartoony-style artwork on Spider-Man. And I enjoyed it for that. 
I really did. The more I'm looking at it now, I'm, I'm glancing down at the pages. It literally is those early days of McFarlane and Spider-Man where it was very, very cartoony. It, 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 it was um, exaggerated to such an, an, an extent, but we loved him for it. But when you look at it, when you look back at it now, when you take a, a moment, no, I say take a moment, it's like 25 years, <laughs> and you look back on it, um, which is a moment in a long, long lifetime, it's a moment, but uh, yeah, he he is the, the successor of Todd McFarlane, so if you love McFarlane back in the day and his take on Spider-Man, do yourself a favour and get that, because just artwork-wise, story-wise, you know, it's not going to blow your mind, but artwork-wise it will. And the same with this. St no, no, actually, this is the opposite. Story-wise, the resurrection of EC Comics. Love it. And I love the fact, I think I said this last week with their other title, I love the fact they're doing the font from the original 1950s EC Comics. Uh, and they're all they're all little stories, you know, four, three or four little stories, how many? Uh, yeah, four stories, all with that little twist in the tail. I think... You know, nothing unexpected. Not everyone is a winner, but that's what you're going to get with an, an anthology. So, no, but I, I like that. And to master the art of telling a short story, you've got to be the top of your game to do that, in my opinion. You know, there are plenty of writers and artists out there that can weave a story over a year's worth of comics. You know, 12 months at 30 pages, 32 pages each. You get given the brief. Tell me a story in five pages. Different ball game. Doctor Strange, again, this is a regular on. I'm really enjoying Jed McKay and Pasquale Ferry. They really are now working so well together. To, we, to give us a new take, uh, such a modern take on Doctor Strange, but without like, modernising the whole idea, but without, um, without changing the character, just bringing modern sensibilities to the storytelling and to the characters. Love it, love it. And what, what issue are we at now? 18 issues. It took me a while, so if, you, you, if you're not getting Doctor Strange, but... You used to, and you're thinking, oh, it doesn't look so great. It took me a while to get used to Pasquale Ferry's artwork, I've got to say. And also, Jeb McKay's take on the character. But believe me when I say, if you bear with it, after that first arc, by the end of the first story arc, you really are real. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're there. You're there. And last one, honourable mention... The cover looks like a P. Craig Russell is back doing, uh, trying to do a, 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 a Batman cover, which I which I love because P. Craig Russell is one of my favourite. Google it if you've never heard of him. You're dead to me if you have. If, if you have, you if you no, I'm, I'm joking. P. Craig Russell. This looks like a cover from him, and I wasn't so enamoured of the interior artwork, but the storyline is absolute power storyline is really put it pulls you along with a lot of momentum so whoever is doing the overarching arrangement of these storylines um yeah and batman a team it's a batman and catwoman team up versus bizarro ish so that's it and by the way that it be, don't say that's a spoiler and roll your eyes because look they're all on the cover <laughs> I could hear you. Right. So if you're going to stay with me for a deep dive on the top five, if you can sit, well, you won't if you consider that a, a, a spoiler, will you? No, you'll abandon me. If you haven't, you've probably all yeah, clicked off already. Anyway, please, I would be honoured if you would join me for a deep dive on my top five after my scroll.
Okay, gang. Here we go. We're going to start. We're going to start with this, and I know, I know I've done a separate video of it, uh, and all the other um, X Men titles available at the moment from the Ashes. I don't know who this is, but an intriguing introduction. Gal, Gal Simone with this with this character, and this, she may she may be familiar to regular X Men readers. My point is. I'm jumping back into the X-Men. These two were, were, were spot on, changing uh, the X, the old X-Men mansion and all that. She's saying, burn it down, burn it down. Uh, so she's obviously, and we've had someone here turn up. I mean, is that Charles? I don't know, but I love it. Gail Simone, David Marquez on the artwork. Uh, Gail Simone, obviously the, the writer, awesome. I don't know what else Gail has done or if she's been a, a regular X-Men writer, so forgive me. But we have got four heavy hitters here. Well, three and a half. <laughs> Nightcrawler, I don't know, is he a heavy hitter? Anyway, love the art style of Marquez. I love the take on Rogue with that. Um, they've kind of taken her back to the youthful um the youthful exuberance of uh, the character and her her character you, you know her powers and obviously she she's married gambit while I've been away I love this I love these panels these panels here like pure pure western you know you can hear kind of like um Ennio Morricone music in the background if this if this comic was directed by Sergio Leone <laughs> anyway, here's our big bad for the issue. And this is another reason why I liked X-Force. They, they're giving us the big bad. They're giving us our main characters drawn nicely, coloured nicely. Um, I mean, look, look, I mean, that's some beautiful colouring right there. We need, we need to mention the colour. Sorry, forgive me for flicking back. Um, Matthew Wilson particularly this kind of stuff you you might think it's easy to do but believe it or not this kind of stuff is subtle um it really it really is especially to lead us into this this luminous luminescent green um in this way it it, it really is a you know a, a, an art form in and of itself the colorization of these comics so yeah basically fight, fighting the dragon uh G gambit rogue and wolverine you know she's so in love we, we, we realize she's got married but this is what i like while the story is ongoing i've been brought in with all of the things that have been going on and we are also introduced to so in midpoint now, look, here's the staples. We are now introduced to, here's Scott in Alaska. We know what he's up, you know, well, we're getting a little inkling of what he's up to in Alaska, doing some experimentations and building. And now we're introduced to a new mystery character, a new mystery mutant. And Nightcrawler gets involved now. And this was a part of the story from Gal Simone that I really did enjoy. And I know this is so, you know, please turn off now if, if you haven't read this comic yet. Uh, major big spoiler alert, but not in a major way. Just a beautifully rendered three or four pages of comic book storytelling, which is this kid who's terminally ill being visited by the X-Men and I did appreciate the fact that Gal Simone has done this to highlight although these are mutants our characters our main our main people are mutants this highlights their humanity by visiting this terminally ill patient at the hospital and you can tell by the panels that it doesn't go well and obviously the word terminal will and then again the colouring really really nice in this um, so that gets really really top marks for the humanity of the story the beauty of the artwork um, and the colouring uh, Gail Simone yeah 
Yeah, top, top draw stuff there. It doesn't hurt that, you know, she's got three and a half of the of of the of the main characters of X-Men. I'm only being by the way, I'm only being facetious if you are just joining my channel, you know I've got my tongue in my cheek when I say three and a half. Obviously, Nightcrawler is one of them old, the, the old guard mainstays. This book, I've got to show you guys um, how well Brian Hill and Stefano Caselli has the momentum as really, really, you know, war. War has come to uh, Wakanda. Because what's happening is Ra and Conchu are basically setting the rest of I mean this is great stuff by Caselli. Um they're setting the rest of Africa against Wakanda. And what what T'Challa is realizing is that we have been in isolation for too long. So with the help of Storm and uh Killmonger, um but they're they're basically going to war. Lovely artwork again. Lovely artwork. But the pace has really really up the ante like brian hill has really started to to bring it to bring us the story now so again like many a modern writer he is guilty of taking his time but i think what i'm saying is bear with it guys and this is issue seven the last two issues have been really really good it makes everything worthwhile so yeah top top draw top draw stuff from marvel this has been top draw for nearly two years, and all I've got to do is highlight. I don't know if you're a regular, you're probably going to skip this this chapter, and if you're a regular and you're not picking this up, well then, I don't know why you still subscribe to my channel. <laughs> just look, just look at Wes Craig, Wes Craig's storytelling. Just take a moment from from the, 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 the far distance to the near distance to now and then what's going on behind them. And then, and, and I like the fact that everything without borders, like I've said before, I'm sorry if I'm boring, but when you, you use this technique of, 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 not high, um, of not bordering anything, it opens, it opens up the pages beyond belief. And this art, where's Craig's artwork? It suits this story so well. You can tell that he's having the time of his life weaving this fantasy tale of this brother and sister and their quest. That's as simple as that. It's not, it's not a convoluted storyline at all. Now they're on the, in this next story arc, they're on the dragon road. And yeah, they're going to encounter creatures like this. And with her robot arm, which she's had all the way along this storyline, which we know nothing about, we've got to issue 20, and now we're being told that these people here that are hovering in the air, that they've just met, and that's got some kind of strange power over her arm, they are the creators of the aforementioned arm. Just love, I just love it. I just love the tale that, that's being weaved. Uh, Jin, the brother, the, the, the young one, has had a dream about this character in, in previous issues and it goes on from there. So, a absolutely superb. If you're not picking this up, do yourself a favour. Either catch up with it on trade paperback or just, I don't think they're going for a million, a million squids the previous night. You know, whether you want floppies or whatever, just, just catch up with it, please. Please, just just help, help, help your old mate, help your old mate geeky old hog out. Now, I don't know how this one is going to fit in to the, to the camera angle, but I've got to show you, and this is so late in the day, I've forgotten what the story is about. I know they've given us a bit of preamble in the back. All I want to show you guys is how beautiful this Lee Bermejo artwork is. I mean, it's, it's the story's by Matson Tomlin, but it really is. No one is, no one's picking, I'm sorry, Matson, but no one's picking it up for your story, uh, Governor. It is for this glorious, look at this beautiful stuff. But 
like I say, because of my brain and the way it works, I've forgotten what the storyline's about. I'm going to have to read issues one and two before I really, you know, I'm, be, I'm just being honest with you guys. Look at this. Look. Um, I'm going to have to read issues one and two because I haven't got a clue what's going on. I know it's time travel. I know it's different. I, I, I know. But Lieber Mergeau has really, look, look, every, there is not a page that isn't gloriously illustrated. You know, stuff like this just takes time. It's backgrounds. It's figure work. It's, it's shade. It's light and shade. It's everything. And it takes time. And I love him for it. And absolutely be I don't know who this is, by the way. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just showing you the artwork. So apologies if you was expecting more. <laughs> Nevertheless, if this is, I mean, but, you know, another year, another year, and um, this might be finished and collected in trade paperback. <laughs> so uh, I kind of can't say go and rush out and get this because all right there's three books i mean it's taken them about a year and a bit to do that so uh maybe wait for the trade paperback in another couple of years <laughs> if that was coming out on time it would have been book of the week but instead this is book of the week now scotty young like, like i said in my introduction isn't exactly it, it, He's, I think he's a good storyteller. I, I buy a lot of comics written by Scotty Young now, and he does less artwork and he does more writing. Jorge Corona's artwork on this, his style of artwork, is a beautiful thing to behold. And then, when you get a writer and an artist that are going to weave you a story, that are going to, you know, where are we? Well, it's not somewhere good, is it? This isn't somewhere good, and it's called depression. So we know we're not in anywhere good, even if we've forgotten quite everything that happened last issue. Our hero isn't in any really good situation. And then all you have to do from there is drink, is drink Corona's artwork in. And I do like a bottle of Corona. That's a beer in England, by the way, so I don't know if anyone got that little joke. Anyway, his his artwork is stunning, and the colour we we do have to mention the colouring again. Uh, Jean Francois Bellieu, uh, who I think has been, uh, has, um, I think he's worked with uh, Scott Young on his image stuff before. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but I do recognise that name. But this is how you follow. She's beaten up. She's drowning her sorrows. And now what? But like what's this? What's this transformation from this? What's going on? What the hell is going on? Well, we know what's going on because this is obviously a flashback. Unless you're stupid, you know this is a flashback. And this is, this, this for me is why I love one of one of the many 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 reasons I love comics to drink in artwork like this and look, look you know if this was a movie look at how beautifully directed this movie would be and now we're out in the rain um, there was no rain a minute ago but now we're out in the rain and now she's falling over because she's chasing which, if you follow the story, we know is her daughter. So, you know, is she dreaming it? Is she there? Because we know she's in kind of some hellscape. And then these notes, this motif that has been following us through the four issues. An absolutely beautiful thing. I, I, I thoroughly look at the detail that, 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 that Corona brings to just this one panel look. With the ladders and the, it, it looks almost like a, a World War One trench. To be fair, the way it's designed, um, but but obviously not, you know. But with the levels and then to put, just to put this in in the front, and then have these motifs, absolutely beautifully crafted. This is no, this is no easy thing to do. And now you know, 
the guitar. You know, whoever has been playing this tune, here he is. Here he is. And again, there is not a wasted panel. Not a wasted panel. Absolutely stunning. Beautiful stuff. Um, so that is, before I gush too long and make this video like a one hour epic, I will leave it there. I think I've made my point, guys. Um, why that is my book of the week. An absolutely beautiful piece of comic book artwork and storytelling. Cover-wise, hmm, I don't think it says a lot. All right, you've got the crow and people underground and they look dead. <laughs> but, come on. It's, that's Gambit. That's, that's Wolverine. That's Rogue. That's... Uh, Nightcrawler, that's the three and a half. <laughs> all right, all right. I know I've gone on. I know I've banged on about that too much. Anyway, here's Spider Man with a lightsaber. I mean, uh, spinning his web. That, that's a lovely look. Lionel Francis. You, he's going to always give you a good cover. Um, keep it with Spider Man. Look, love it. And again, I don't know if you quite get what I mean about the Todd McFarlane esque cartoony style for spider-man but there's nothing wrong with that but who is this <laughs> who is this and why has spider-man got a beard <laughs> i just love this cover i've got to show it because this is pure that's pure ec i know where uh is it only it's got the whoever yeah only press that has got the ec rights now marvellously recreating that old EC vibe, but only if you've been getting, like me, an old crusty, an old geeky old hog, I've got some original EC comics, so I get it. But this harks back to the old Frazetta covers and, 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 and stuff like that. Um, Batman getting his head crushed in by Bizarro and being helped out by Catwoman is always going to get my attention. And like I said, it is a bit P. Craig Russell-esque. Not quite. Obviously, it hasn't got that detail to it. But I don't know. It was something about, something about some of the line work. <sighs> Wolverine, come on. Full attack mode. With all these characters around him. Come on. It's going to attract your attention, isn't it? With, full, with all his claws out and everything. And the, and the mask he puts on in the film. <gasps> Spoiler alert. I thought... John Romita Jr., you know, these Daredevil covers, he, he's changing his style, and I'm not sure if I'm liking it very much, but that was quite a striking image for me. Uh, one more. I mean, there's a load of covers this week, really, in contention, in, con in contrast to last week, where there was only about half a dozen. Now, the Spider-Man swinging over the black cat while she's bending over, <laughs> it's always going to get my attention <laughs> oh I'm sorry forgive me forgive me for that but I had to do it I had to get that out of my system and anyway on the, in the same vein here's Black Cat bending over here's Gun Honey with uh, Jubblies out and a machine gun and you know normally I mean, in days gone by, that's that's been my cover of the week. But I can't, I can't keep doing, I can't keep doing that, can I? So anyway, guys, no, I'm going to take them two away. Like, don't start atting me and hating me. Um, static, static, traditional. It's just dinosaur and a spaceman. So come on, but Batman, I'm, you know. Mm, Spider-Man and Ain't No Grave. I know this is a weird one this week, guys, but this, um, it's not exciting. I know it's got all the imagery there for the Uncanny X-Men. I know it's got the imagery there. And this is a weird decision. This is a weird, a really weird decision because for me, this spider there was there's something about this Spider-Man cover that is intriguing and I think it might be who doesn't love all the webbing but I've got to say and I'm, I've made my decision 
and I've got to say, for cover of the week, and I know this is going to be controversial, so come at me, come on, come at me. I know it's controversial, but it's got a dinosaur and a spaceman and aliens around in an auditorium. That it's a spaceman versus a dinosaur. Come on, there's a robot eye there. That has got it all going on for your pocket money. And for that reason, that's my cover of the week. And if you followed me this far, guys, I'm sorry it's been a bit of an epic this week. I don't know what it is. I know there was a lot of comics, perhaps because it was a slow week last week and I got overexcited this week. But if you've bared with me this far, thank you so, so much, as always. And until next time, I will bid you all adios. Mm -hmm.